You already know BootlegCat.com, Wild941, chilling right now in Tampa. My St. Pete specifically with my dog B.O.B., man. What's B.O.B., up, what up, player? Good. It's been a while since I've seen you, my dude. Right on, man. You tore down that wild splash stage back in March. Look, man, I've been seeing you on Instagram with these no genre joints. Yeah. Is this the record label? Is this the yeah, mixtape? Yeah. What is this? Label no genre. Yeah. It's my record label, just started it. You know, I got a couple artists who uh, I'm going to announce, you know, announce the roster soon you know when the time is right but you know i've been working all summer on this project man and like you know now it's time to put the, put the pants on you know what i'm saying put the, the ceo pants on the executive pants so you're gonna um be signing guy ice is playboy trey on the label um well I'm, you know trey i can't, I can't say anything right you can't say anything okay I but, but trey trey is a part of the label for he sure is. he is a part of, he's a part he's like you know he's on the executive the seat of executive chairman board you know what i'm saying Trey got a seat up there. For sure. Um, so, No Genre is also going to be a project. Yes, it's going to be a No Genre part two. See, the whole label stemmed from my mixtape, right. No Genre. And, like, I noticed over the years, like, fans would always come up and say, yo, it's the best fucking tape you ever did, man. Like, it's the best. And so, you know, I was like, one day someone was like, yo, man, you should just make it a label. And it just... Kind of fits your style. Yeah, your exactly. So we're going to make it a part two. And in lieu of doing so, introduce all the artists on the label you know and we're gonna release all the videos it's gonna be kind of like your purple ribbon all, all stars low key like that project something you can like say that. that something like that you can say that you wouldn't be wrong to say that um now when you first drop i mean i think even still man a lot of people uh you know you get especially early you used to get a lot of andre 3000 comparisons you know yeah. because you're so diverse musically um how excited were you and have you had the opportunity to see outcast reunite on stage man i haven't got a chance to see them perform man like it's on my bucket list and you know you know coming from Atlanta you know Outkast is something that everybody like when you hear Outkast it's like you're proud to be from Atlanta right, you know right, what right. I'm saying and they, they kind of made you feel that way when you hear them on the radio so um you know for me that's I gotta see them live like, I have to you know what I mean yeah well they actually did a festival out here it was crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised y'all ain't doing um I get funky. I'm surprised y'all ain't doing a, 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 a. They're doing like 40 festivals. You ain't on nothing with them. Man, I actually, uh, I actually am. I was on one, but it's on another day. And then I got booked for another show. So. Oh, so you can't stick around. Unfortunately, you know what I'm saying. Outkast don't pay my bills, so I got. Right. <laughs> I got to go get that check. Um, I love to. Um, I feel like uh, you. You're like always. Every time you come out with some new music, like the last album, Underground Luxury, you put out a couple of hood joints that that really yeah. went off in the club. Yeah. And then like in a lot of interviews, like specific the one that kind of pops up is the one you went you went to Hot 97. Like yeah. people try to box you in. When, when you, it's like they want you to kind of pick a pick a side. Like, are you gonna be this top 40 guy? Are you gonna be this, this hip hop dude? Like, yeah, you know it's crazy, man. I had somebody come up to me in the club like a while back and was like, so like you know we just want to know, you know she was kind of being kind of funny, but you know she's like we just want to know like you know what what type of music you're gonna make, you know so we can know you know what to expect from you or you, so we know what to respect you for you know what i'm saying and i'm like i do everything and she was like yeah but you know what type of music are you gonna make and i'm like i do fucking everything you know and so that that conversation just let me know like i'm i'm in my own lane you know sure it, just, it was like a, a an indicator of, of how some people just really can't you know i'm still building that bridge to paint the picture and show people how you can make any type of music, you know what I mean? So, how underrated do you feel you are as an MC? I don't feel underrated at all. You don't feel, feel that way? I feel like you're underrated. I mean, but you know, that's, you know, I think, I think for me it's something that people appreciate things that don't come easy, right. you know what I'm saying? And, you know, maybe, maybe like, if my music was just like overly played, maybe it would it would kind of like make you not want it as much. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of feel comfortable wherever my music goes. I feel like it's gonna go to its appropriate place. You know what I mean? And the right people gonna listen to it. And that's why I have such a strong fan base because I never force nothing down anybody's throat. You know, I just let everybody pause. I just let everybody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I let people come as they, you know, come as they are. Whatever. You wanna get by real quick? Who let Cat? I don't know what the hell he talking about, man. What the hell he talking about, man? Get the hell on, man. <laughs> no genre. <laughs> no genre. <laughs> oh, well, you have so many huge hit records. What's like, everybody got to have a song that they're kind of tired of performing. What's that song for you? I used to. 
But I don't no more, man. I, I'm gonna tell you what, I used to like, I used to hate performing magic. But like, uh, I fucking love performing it now. I don't know why, it's just like, you know, it just really ended up being a cycle, right? Yeah, it does, man. But, you know, I mean, really, honestly, as an artist, man, whenever you got a song that people know and a song that people can party to and party with you too, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a beautiful thing. You never get tired of it. Coming from like Atlanta is, and like I know my expectations for because I've been a fan of yours. I remember when there was that struggle to get the B.O.B. album out on Atlantic Records off top. Like, you know, you had your shit popping online. Fucking seven mixtapes. Dog. And these were like seven albums, man. Great like, these weren't just fucking mixtapes. I'll Be In The Sky was such a great video, such a great record. It didn't work. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, but. You know how much recording you got to do for seven albums? Uh, you know I what I mean? Man. So it was like, when I, I. I was like, by that 7 1, I was like, man, we need to get this out. We need to get this and out. Then, and then, yo, it turned out, Lupe tur turned down the song that you ended up kind of launching Bruno Mars on. Yeah, you know, and I feel like it happened, everything happened how it was supposed to happen. You know what I'm saying? Right. I learned I learned so much shit in the mixtape world, and I was able to gain my fan base yeah. and gain a following, you know, the, the organic way. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no huge. And part of it was my fault too, why my album didn't come out sooner because I was still learning what I wanted to do. I was still and learning. And that was kind of like when you yeah. like first introduced like the fact of touring with becoming Bobby Ray. And that was my that was my best mixtape. I mean, my favorite mixtape. Bill Beaver's Bobby Ray. Beaver's Bobby oh, that was a great mixtape. Yeah, that shit came out when I lived in Idaho. That was my favorite one. Yeah, that's a good one, man. Now, um, but I was gonna ask you, man. I know how important the music is to you, and I'm not sure how important every, what everyone thinks is to you, but like, how important. I mean, I feel like you have really good albums, but I feel like people who've been riding with you forever and waiting for like that classic B.O.B. album that everybody can finally shut the fuck up about whether or not, you know what I mean? Like, is that like important for you to make, like, I know every, I mean, everybody when they go in, you know what I'm saying, that's the goal, to make the best possible music. But like, you know, do you feel like you have a class for it? Do you feel like you're still, you know what I'm saying, does that even matter to you? Not and really, like, man, you know, I make music for me, but I perform it for the fans. Right. You know, so it's kind of like when I was in my basement, you know, making music before anybody ever heard of me, you know, I was just making it for myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know who was going to like it or who was going to listen to it or there was no expectation for what B.O.B. could bring to the table or what he didn't bring or could bring. You know, so like I kind of take that same mentality with me and, and just do what I want to do, man. Like when I did Underground Luxury, I wanted to make a club album. I wanted to make... I wanted to fucking present it like this. Yeah. I wanted these singles to come out first. Now, if I would have came out with like John Doe first, or nobody told me first, so it would have been perceived John, as a, you know what I'm saying, as a pop out. But I really wanted to. That's where I wanted to yeah, go. Yeah, that's what yeah, I wanted yeah. to do. So yeah. listen, I'm a huge connoisseur of pornography. You put <laughs> my favorite, my favorite porn star. Actually, my second favorite porn second star of favorite. all time. Currently, my favorite because my first, Isla Fox, is retired. But nah. <laughs> Skin Diamond, man. Yeah. Talk about putting Skin Diamond in the music video, because that was that that, that yeah. was like, it was you know it was a it was so it was like a, the best idea ever. You know what I mean? I assume you're a fan. Yeah, absolutely. You know what's so was fucked up though, man. I actually didn't get to meet her. What? I didn't. That's horrible. It's two different two different shoes. Right, that is true. So I was like, damn. I would have been selfish and like, yo, we gotta write a scene at the end where we end up running into each other and having sex. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been, been that firm. But that was dope, man. She did a good, good ass job too, acting the lines out and all that. Did you like pick her out, or was it yeah. the director? Yeah. Okay, so who, who's like uh, your top two, three porn stars of all time? Um, well, she's definitely one of them. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know too many porn stars. You don't know too many. You know skin down. That's all that matters. <laughs> all right, so uh, when, when can we expect the No Genre Two, man? No Genre Two, uh, probably June. I'm gonna say June. I'm not gonna give you no numbers. Cause I don't want to have nobody disappointed. June and then, cause I hate when people lie to me. I rather people just tell me. Right. Like people keep their word. Fourth album is already, I'm sure, almost done. I mean, you work so much. What's, yeah, fourth album's done. Album like? Fourth album's done. Um, I will compare the fourth album to like The Adventures of Bobby Ray. Older, In my opinion, your best album. Yeah. yeah, the older brother. Oh, it's, dope. It's my most diverse album. So this is will be the next. Man, most diverse album. For sure, for sure. So, That's what's up, man. I appreciate you. Already. No genre is the label. No genre is the label. Label, no genre. Go what it is, man.